Hello and welcome to chapter 1, tutorial 6 about containers. So last time we saw the if and the loops and now we're going to see containers and we're going to see a new kind of loops which is the for each because of containers. So this tutorial is going to be a little bit longer so we're going to erase what we had here. We're not going to need this. All right, let's start fresh. And we're, we're going to start by seeing normal arrays, just like plain C arrays. All right, so let's create a, a, an array of int. Let's call it int, int array. And that's how you declare it. And you can initialize, initialize it with a bunch of values. So one, two, three, four, five, let's say. All right, so now I have an array. So let's say I put a breakpoint there by clicking there or pressing F9. And when I debug, the program is going to stop there. Right? So I've just shown you how to debug. Wonderful. Uh, so if you hover your mouse over this, you're going to see the current values in the arrays. All right. So perfect, it worked. So now we can iterate over all these arrays and output. So if we do like we did in the previous tutorial, we're going to do a for int i equals zero, i less than five, equals high. And then uh, we're going to see out i and line. All right, so that's what we did on the previous tutorial. Actually, you know, that's wrong. We don't want to output i, we want to output the content of the array index i. All right, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. So now we're going to see a new way of doing this. So for, so it's not for each or for each is, is the same thing. Oh, actually, each works. I don't know what's this, <laughs> but it's just for. And then we're going to uh, get our value. And then you put a colon into array. So what this will do all right, so this will iterate uh, for each, basically it's a for each item, put them in VAS. So the value is now one, two, three, four, five. So I can just output VAS like this, one, two, three, four, five. So this is new in C++11 or 10. Uh, it's a wonderful way to iterate arrays and vectors and whatnot and lists and maps and dictionaries. This is this is what I use now for almost everything. It's amazing. And there's even something more amazing about this. And I'm going to show you a new, a new type here. It's auto, all right? So if I go mouse over the val, it knows, as you can see, it knows it's an int val because it knows it's an int because of this, right? So the, you don't have to worry about what the type is. You can just put auto. Because maybe like you're doing a bunch of those loops and later on you go in, in your initial code and you replace this with floats. Well, this will, will, will still work. As you can see, it knows it's a float now. So auto is very powerful. And you know, auto works even just for declaring a simple variable like this. See, it knows it's an int. If I do 0.0, 5.0, then it will know it's a double. And if we put an F there, then it know it's a float, right? So auto is it's kind of a smarter way. It's it's the equivalent of the var. So in C sharp you can just do var a equal five, and it's exactly the same thing. So it's very powerful. It's very useful, uh, and it, it's 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 going to figure it out at compile time. This is not a runtime things like it knows it's an int array, and it will just put in there. All right, so that's it for. Uh, initializing a simple array. So, all right, so so let's just put some dash like that in between our examples. So this way we, you know, the other tutorial we had all those arrays. So this this will be a little bit cleaner. All right, so now let's change, a, let's change a value. Let's change this one, all right, the second one. So we go get our arrays. Sorry, that's the third one. 2 is 0, 1, 2, all right? Because arrays start at zeros. It's all zero-based arrays, just like Java and C++ again. No, no difference here. Equal 12. And now if I output that again, let's copy this. Oh, 
you see now the third value is, is changed to 12. Wonderful, simple enough. Uh, and arrays can also be of other types, a more complex type, let's say a string, right? So let's say it's a name array and you can define it like that. Bob, Dave, Steve and Julie. And you can iterate through them the exact same way with the auto parameters. Next second, we're going to change for name and reader. So if I mouse over the, the var there, we're going to see it's a string. So I know here what you see is actually very messy and complicated. You know, uh, you see basic string and then a template and then an allocator and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so you don't have to worry about that. It just makes, you know, like debugging like right now. It's, it's a little bit messy. Uh, this is C++ because the type string is actually more complex than just string. Okay, it's a type def actually. Uh, not going into detail there. It's the only thing you have to know, it's a, it's a string. All right, uh, <laughs> let's continue like this. So now again, you can change, uh, let's say we can change the first name. Let's put uh, our separators there. Oh, we didn't even test that. Huh. All right, Bob, Dave, Steve, Julie. Bob, Dave, Steve, Julie, perfect. We're going to change, let's say we're going to change Dave and we're going to call it Chloe. So same thing as we, we did here, you know, you can just do it this way. So let's do the same thing. Let's print that. And you can see the second value got changed from Dave to Chloe. All right. Uh, so that's it for arrays. Uh, so this is like the, the C-sharp arrays, basically. And what you have in C-sharp is the two other containers that we're going to see today. Uh, there are tons of different containers in C++. There are Q, there are stacks, and they all have their own purpose. But the only ones we're going to see is basically the equivalent of the C-sharp list and the C-sharp dictionary. All right. So the list in the C-sharp is more of a vector. So let's call it vectors all right let's let's test vectors so you're going to have to include something new here it's called vector so a vector is basically a list is bit but more in the style of an array so it's a little bit more optimized in the way it's handled it will allocate memory uh, ahead of time and you know you can iterate the elements and they will be together in the memory so it will be a little bit more efficient for the cpu uh, without going into details but I'm not showing you how to use lists, I'm showing you how to use vectors instead. So, so let's do the same thing. Instead of doing like the int array like that, we're going to create a vector of int, all right? So in C sharp, it, remember it's lists, right? So let's write it C sharp way first. You'll do something like that. So in C++, it's just vector of int, all right? And like up, up there, we just initialize it. And the way you print it, you guessed it, is the exact same way. The auto knows it's an int. You can iterate over an array. Wonderful. One, two, three, four, five. All right. Now, there's a difference between an array and a vector. In, a, in an array, you cannot just say, I'm starting inserting things in the middle and stuff. No, the array is fixed length. Right, so you initialized it with five item, it has five items, that's how it is. Uh, a vector, like you can grow it, uh, reduce it and whatnot. So let's say we insert something, all right? So in vector dot insert, and we want to insert it at the, before the three here. So zero, one, two, index two, we want to insert 12. So this is not going to work here, right? Because it, it's not an index two. You need you need to specify basically a vector uh, iterator to call. Let's just say in simpler words, the vector is somewhere in the memory and you have to tell him from the begin of the vector plus two. All right? So I'm not a big fan of this, but that's how it works. and it just makes your card a little bit longer, but you have to say from the begin, this is how you specify position in those inserted stuff. So it's going to insert it there. 
and you're going to say I'm inserting 12. All right, so let's try this. Let's print this, same again. So I'm copying, pasting code here. We could have created a function. You know, remember we saw that in the previous tutorials, <laughs> uh, just for the sake of the example here. All right, so you see before the three, we inserted 12. Now there's six items in it. So this is for insert. Uh, we can also insert multiple items at one, at once. <clears throat> so in vector that insert. So we want to insert insert uh, before the three again. Plus three because now we inserted twelve. So remember. So now it it looks like this, right? So zero, one, two. Three, so we want to insert it there. So before three, and we want to insert more uh, 13, you know, we have 12, we want to insert uh, 13, 14, 15. So you can just open the same way you were initializing here. You can do the same thing here, 13, 14, 15. All right, so it would insert this, let's print it, before the three. 12, 13, 14, 15, before the 3. All right, so you can just manipulate things like that. And this is again C11 stuff, or C10, I never remember. Uh, initializing a vector like that, it was not possible before. So before it was actually kind of messy because you had to basically insert those items one by one on a different line. It's, uh, there, there were some tricks to do it differently, but th this is very much easier to initialize vectors and is the same thing here you can just and say and created them like this say insert all of those there makes things a lot simpler uh, all right so that's it for insert uh, let's say also erase erase is important all right so you want to erase so let's say you want to erase uh, with everything we just inserted. All right, so so right now it should look like this. So you want to erase 0, 1, 2, 2, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you want to erase 2, 4, 5, and 6. All right, no problem. Remember, we start 2 and we end at 6. All right, so it's the same thing. You need the big N here because it's actually positioned in the vector. So if I print this, I should have gone back to, no, wait, no, yeah, no, that's perfect. So I've, I've went back to exactly what I, where I was before. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, that that's how to erase. If you, erase, you want to erase just one, you will just do this. You know, I just erased the 12. And if you want, you can erase a range like that. Uh, same thing with arrays. You can have a vector of string. Let's call it names. And let's say Chloe, Bob, Steve, and Jolie. And you can just output them this <clears throat> right and then you have Chloe Bob let's show the code here Chloe Bob Steve and Jolie perfect so same thing as the arrays except now we have more power because we can actually insert and remove them uh, <clears throat> the next thing we're going to see <clears throat> it's uh, let's say you want to sort them that's always practical, right? So you can just loop manually or there's some sort functions. Uh, but what you're going to have to do for this, so the vector itself, if you try to do names dot and see what functions are available, it's pretty limited. You know, you can insert and erase. And you know, that's that's pretty much it. And get the, the length by doing size. All right. Uh, but if you want to do more uh, complex operation like sort something, you have to include more stuff. And this is called algorithm. All right. We started having a bunch of things there. Right? <clears throat> this is all standard library stuff. It's all 
on, on the internet, just Google and you'll find it right away. <clears throat> All right, so let's let's do the sort. Let's sort our name. So they're not alphabetical here. Julie should be here and Bob should be first. So let's do sort names. And you can just do that. Unfortunately, you have to do begin and names.n. All right, I want you to sort from the beginning to the end. And then we're going to output this. Hey, look at that. Alphabetical order. So what's cool about this too is you can just say, well, I just want to sort those two ones. I don't want to sort the other ones. Well, you can just start at begin plus two to the end. And it's just going to sort the last two ones. Julie and Steve. So this is why it works like this. It's not just sort and paste it because it gives you much, much power to which range exactly to sort. And uh, understand that a vector can have like millions of items in them. All right. This is this is C++ we're talking about here. They can be bytes or other stuff. And maybe you're working on a huge data and you just want to sort small bits of it. This is why it's like that. It's it's very powerful. Uh, all right, so that's it. That's it for vectors and arrays. Now there's a, another type we need to see is the what the maps. So the C sharp equivalent of this, it's the dictionaries. Very very powerful. So if you never use them, just a quick and introductory in C sharp, you'll have a dictionary. Sorry. and you can map strings to let's see, enemy objects, whatever, all right? <clears throat> and uh, and what you can do with this is, you know, go get an enemy by its name. So let's say uh, uh, Grok, whatever that kind of enemy is. And then you can say, uh, uh, enemy Grok is equal to this. So the dictionary basically can uh, map a key to an item and usually this is actually very optimized in the code because it will uh, <clears throat> it, it will sort them in a way that they can access it really fast so we have the equivalent C++ it's called a map and since C++ 11 we have an order and map and this is the one I'm going to show you here an order and map a usual map, so if it's just map alone, everything's going to be ordered. You know, it's going to be sorted by this time. The prime is the searching in it is actually pretty slow compared to the unordered map, which is very fast. It's, it's the replacement for hash map. So so that's that's the three types I'm going to show you today. The, the arrays, the vectors, which replace the list from uh, C sharp, and the unordered maps which replaced the dictionary from uh, yeah from uh, C sharp so all right we're going to map string to int and we're going to call them call them a level so let's say it's a we want to list the levels of uh, of every players in the level in the, in the game right so Chloe is level one, so you can initialize it like this. It's pretty simple. Bob is level 54. Let's copy this. this bar. Steve and Julie, and he's, he's level 27, and she's level 10. All right, Julie is, is higher because, you know. Otherwise, the both girls are like lower level. It's not fair. <laughs> uh, and and then we can iterate to them just like we did uh, with with the for each. So we're going to do auto, uh, and it's a k it's a k value. All right. So this is a key. This is a value. So it's the same thing uh, in C sharp too. If you iterate with a for each, uh, it's going to iterate through key values. All right, so let's iterate through the, to the, uh, the list of levels like this. And we're going to output uh, key values dot first. All right, so instead of being key, instead of being key and value, here they call it first and second. 
all right i'm uh, not going to go into the reason for uh, as why but basically this is the first and this is the second all right it, 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 it may, kind of makes sense so first that's the name is level value that's second all right so if i print that chloe is level one steve is level 10 bob is level 54 and julie is level 27. so you'll notice something right away they're not in the same order chloe is first okay but after that, it's Steve here. But here is Bob, and then you know uh, that's because the this is this is it because it's unordered and map. The order doesn't matter because it's a dictionary where you can quickly fetch information for it. You can go get stuff from it, and it will. You can have again millions of items, and it's going to to know how to get them fast. All right? It's it's going to be a constant speed to access an order and map. All right, so so again, so from this you can access it. So let's let's access it. Uh, and if I say let's say Brian is level ninety nine bad luck, <laughs> and so this is this is going to work because if Brian doesn't exist. It's going to create it basically. All right, so let's output this again. And you're going to see that Brian's now in there. He's at the bottom there. He's level 99. All right, so this is very powerful. You're going to use that to sort out your assets, probably. Like uh, every time you load a picture, a PNG for a texture, you're going to, to maybe. Uh, put the texture here but put the file name here as a string so every time another component of your game try to load the same assets what it can do is quick search in it and then see if it already exists and if it already exists well just reuse it like don't load it twice basically so in games we're, we're using that a lot a lot so that's useful that's very powerful and again uh, it's c plus plus it's very powerful this is a hash map you can have millions of items and it's still going to be relatively fast. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Actually, I think this tutorial was probably more interesting than the other ones. We actually saw useful stuff. The next one is even more interesting. We're going to talk about classes. We're going to make our expand our little hero class there a little bit more. All right, so hope you enjoy. See you next time.